So, a couple of years ago, I made a video where I made DIY Perks' DIY projector. After making that video, I discovered a whole world of people who've built projectors just like these, each one providing something unique. I decided I was going to completely remake it to make it more usable, durable, brighter, more aesthetically pleasing, and just better overall. Now, to be clear, I reused most of the parts from the last build, and the heart of the build still stays the same. So, I'm going to just walk you through my build process, and hopefully this video gives you you some ideas for your own projects. So here's a list of the major parts I used in the build. And the first thing I did was get an LCD panel compatible with consoles and AVRs as that's going to be my use case. I also got a condenser lens compatible with my LED to capture as much light as possible. So getting into the project, the first thing I did was test the electrical portion of the project which I highly recommend doing early on in the build. I connected my 19.5 volt 7.7 .7 amp power supply to a power jack which was connected to A, the voltage booster for the LED, B, the voltage step down board for the fans, and C, the step down board for the LCD. After making sure everything worked, I decided to test the optical portion of the build. In the previous version, I had my lenses at inaccurate and undefined lengths from each other. As I said before, I learned a lot after Projector 1.0. So here's what I learned. One, the distance from the LED to the first Fresnel lens should be within 5 millimeters of the Fresnel's focal length. Two, the distance from the second Fresnel lens to the projection lens should be about the focal length of the second Fresnel. Third, the distance from the LCD panel to the projection lens should be the focal length of the projection lens. And four, the Fresnel lenses used by a lot of DIYers are about the same size as the LCD they choose. Here are the focal lengths and sizes of the stuff I used, and theoretically you could make the build more compact by using smaller sizes and focal lengths, but it's my understanding that these parts are harder to come by. So, with this knowledge in hand, I 3D printed some brackets for temporarily mounting the Fresnel and projection lenses on a small baseboard at the correct distances from each other. Instead of an LED, I used a flashlight where the LED would be. Instead of an LCD, I used some transparent vinyl with text written on it. Keep in mind that the projection lens flips the image horizontally and vertically, and adding a mirror will flip the image horizontally again. So, with everything more or less tested, we can start mounting our parts to the actual baseboard. There is no one correct way to do this. It's going to be unique to your build. For example, I want to have keystone correction, which adds a layer of complication to the project. And if you don't want that, then your mounting method is going to vary. Another thing to note is that I'm extending the mini HDMI port on the LCD control board to an HDMI female to female connector on the outside of the chassis. So, after you get your holes and cuts made on the bottom baseboard, you can make the necessary holes in the side pieces for fans, for the LCD panel key, and also the power jack, switch, and HDMI connector. I epoxied those latter three, so the power jack, switch, and HDMI connector in one of the side pieces, and also soldered wires to the switch and power jack at this point, but I would recommend doing this after painting. Speaking of which, we can now paint it, making sure to use primer. I painted white on the outside and I would suggest using a darker color on the inside to prevent light from bouncing around too much. An alternative to painting is to use vinyl wrap. Looking back on it, this would have been such a time saver as opposed to painting and it's way easier too with less setup and no mess. But I ended up putting wood grain vinyl on the exposed wood edges which gave it a pleasing aesthetic. That being said, we can now mount the heatsink and LED. Then we can move on to Fresnel Lens 1, which I will give a quick cleaning to with lens cleaning solution and a microfiber cloth. Actually, I'm going to do this with all the lenses in the build just to make sure it's as clean as possible starting out. Now, we can get the LCD and its accompanying components all ready. As you can see, I've integrated it onto one aluminum plate for simplicity. My next order of operations is a little weird, but bear with me. I mounted the 5 volt voltage step down for the LCD like so, then I screwed down the bracket for the second Fresnel lens. I then mounted the LCD layer. Next is this 3D printed support to prop up the Fresnel lens. By the way, the end of this Fresnel will be attached to this 3D printed knob, 
which will be inserted from the outside through this hole. Turning it will rotate the lens, therefore achieving keystone correction. Next, since I want to have an internal PSU, I unplugged the AC side of the power supply and using this bracket, I managed to securely mount the brick inside the chassis. And using this hole, I can later plug in the power cable. I then mounted the brackets for the first surface mirror. After that, the projection lens was screwed to a plastic plate and screwed to the baseboard. Now, we can finally solder the wires from the switch and socket to the input of the LED boost converter and the buck converter for the fans. After fixing the booster in place, I coupled the keystone correction knob to the second Fresnel lens and screwed the assembly in place. After connecting the input wires to the 5 volt buck, we can plug in the USB cable from the output of the buck to the LCD control board. The key here is optional, but it adds a level of control over the projector, so I'm including it in the build. We can now tighten our right angles holding the wood pieces together, and we can throw in the fan to cool the LCD along with the dust filters for the heatsink fans. So before putting a lid on this whole thing, I decided to first seal it up with some rubber gasket, partially because the USB cable from the control board jutted over the top a little, but also because it can help mask a little bit of the irregularities with the wood, such as being a little warped. And finally, securing the top brings the project to a close. Something you can do to polish off the project is by surrounding any holes with vinyl wrap. This also gives your build a theme of sorts set by the vinyl wrap you choose. But without further ado, let's check out the image quality. Now keep in mind that I'm recording on a phone and it's not going to be able to properly convey projector quality as it's so dark, but in person it's pretty enjoyable to watch uh, due to the 60Hz refresh rate and FHD screen. And since we're using PC case fans, the unit is dead silent. Also, your workspace will get quite messy, so portion plenty of space and try to keep a system of organization so you know where everything is. Other than that, if you have any questions, comment down below. If I can't get around to it, hopefully someone in this community can. And hopefully this video gave you some ideas. If it did, why not hit that like button and subscribe for content like this in the future.